I mean, they basically die at that point. <laughs> All right, let's go through white. <clears throat> Adamant Will, one dub. Instant target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains indestructible until end of turn. This That's is... Great. Great limited trick for Insanity. sure. Insanity. This is one of the better limited tricks of all time. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, indestructible is a don't fuck with me type of ability. You know, usually these have like first strike or maybe flying like mighty <laughs> You or gain like two that. life. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, put a one one into play. <laughs> yeah, here's here's two life, friend, enjoy, you know. Indestructible yeah, is absurd. Is a, yeah, that's a damn good ability. Um Especially because, like, you know, when we were going through black or whatever, there wasn't too many of the minus um, form of, of removal. There was the um, the, the minus two, two or minus five with the kicks, and then there was the, the only other one was the minus one minus one, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the rest so, of destroys. Yeah, I mean, I think indestructible is just just damn good in this limited format for sure. Um, yep. If there's some sort of protect the queen type deck. Uh, in standard, then these cards see play, but if there's not, they never even come close. Right. Um, I don't Plus, know. we still have we still have blossoming defense right now, right? Yes. So I guess we're just. Meh. Yeah, but I mean, maybe yeah. the queen is a blue white card, you know. Oh yeah. Ava century three dub three two flyer. So limited. Limited, limited card. Yeah. Baird. Is that how I'm gonna say this? Baird. Sure. Baird, steward, steward of Argiv, Argive. Two dub dub for a two four vig. Creatures can't attack you or planeswalker you control unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures. Little little ghostly prison, little uh, propaganda, yeah. little uh, little this, little of that. Magus of the T tabernacle, right? Tabernacle. Well, that's Was it? that's I, a tabernacle. I don't know if yeah, there's yeah. one. Oh, it's um, it's a seraph. It's a, it's an angel, not a mag magus. I, was there not a magus? I thought there was. No, I think you're thinking of tabernacle. But anyway, this effect is generally uh, not great, and when it is good, it's because it's really hard to interact with, and this is a creature, expensive creature. Sure. Yeah, I mean that's uh, there, there, it's it's definitely worth noting that now that we're almost through, there there wasn't a lot, you know, to to kill this thing. There was you know like one kicked black card, one. Yeah, well, it's obviously good and limited. Card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's going to be super great there. Um, yeah, as far as constructed, it fails the Chandra test. So. Yep. Benelish Honor Guard Grizzly Bear gets plus one plus zero for each legendary creature you control. I would not be surprised if this crept is constructed, um, but it is definitely a solid two in limited. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the fact that this guy has the ability to plow through all these Luma Grid Wardens is going to be great. Yes, that is key. There, there are a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Benelish Marshall, here's our oh, white one. Dub, yeah, dub, favorite. dub, three, three. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Straight up Anthem. Yeah, straight up glorious anthem on a three three, Let's and it's a knight. Obviously, going to be in that yeah. what white tokeny deck that we were talking about, as well as mm -hmm. the uh, any sort of you know white weenie deck. Yeah, any white weenie deck for sure. I mean, and and we'll 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 get to it eventually, but there's there's definitely some cards that are uh, knight matters. Um, Word. You know, so. Blessed Light, 4 dub, instant, exile, target creature, or enchantment. Awesome. Limited removal. Oh, it's an instant. Okay. Yeah. Instant, exile, a creature, and it's not even like it has to be attacking or anything. Right, yeah. I was going to say, it's usually the requirements for the white cards. Yeah. It's like a tap creature, attacking creature, or something along those lines. Yeah, it's, it has to be a big creature or some other thing. Yeah, yeah just straight removal. Creature. Yeah. Board the Weatherlight. One dub. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a historic card from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in any in a random order. Meh. Again, these cards really need to mill to be good, or you have to be doing something very specific. Yeah, I think if it said put the rest in your graveyard, I'd be really about this card. Oh yeah, I'd be I'd be definitely interested, but 
it sounds like they probably just learned from basically that deck we were describing. And, and yeah, Grizzly it, Salvage it, is too good. Yeah, I mean, if pe if people were not around for that, it was just it w it was oppressive. It was obnoxious. There was like so many sweet lines that you could take that just got spoiled by them being like, "Oh, I drew this eight drop. You're dead now." And, yep. Or I'm burying you in a forty for one or whatever. It's just. Ugh. And it just the play patterns were just it's just did the same thing every single game. There was Absolutely. Like no... It was almost like playing the same game. You're you're definitely yeah. right on that. Call the cavalry. Uh, three dub sorcery. Create two knights. Two two white knight creature tokens with vigilance. Mm -hmm. Efficient and limited. Uh, probably not constructible. But. I think I agree. I think I agree. Yeah. All right. Charge. Dub instant creatures you control get plus plus one until end of turn. This type of effect is constructible, like a Absolutely. fair amount of the time. Yeah, this this can definitely slot right into any of the uh, you know black white tokens or green white tokens or I mean Mono really white in, tokens in, or yeah, white weenie. Yeah, you know, or... white weenie deck of any variety I think would want want uh, something like this. Yeah, anything with the Benelish Marshal you should consider charges, <clears throat> basically. Da Av da Davenant Trapper. Trapper! 2 dub, 3 2. Whenever you cast a historic spell, tap target creature on opponent controls. Yep, trappers are tappers. This one is going to be hard to proc in uh, Limited because there's not really that many artifacts. There's some legendaries, but not a ton. Like, you're going to be able to activate it some amount of the time. But it's not going to be like a reliable tapper. Like you're right, also, very rarely going to be able to activate it on their turn. And yeah, you're not going to be able to activate it on every single one of your turns. Yeah, historically, these these cards have been great because you could occasionally get a double use out of them. Um, right. So, I, I and obviously, you know, just being able to, to icy their, their best creature every turn was the reason to play a lot of cards like this. But... Yeah, I don't think this is going to get it done. This one's just going to be used to, on, like, turn 9, tap two things and get uh, an alpha through. Sure. Where, like, you tap two things, attack all out, and the next turn tap one thing and attack all out, and it's lethal. Like, you just need that little pushover. Right. Little bonus. Danitha Capishan Paragon. Two dub for a 2-2 two -two human knight. First Strike, Vigilance, Lifelink, Aura, and Equipment Spells you cast, cost one less to cast. Okay. There's really not much you can do with this. Yeah, I was trying to think of, like, if there was any, you know, borderline two-drop auras, and I'm struggling. Well, there's, like, um... You know, cartouches and stuff. Okay. But yeah. eh? <laughs> very yeah, very underwhelming and like So I think if if I just eliminate the second ability and just keep the keywords, I think that I'm okay with you know, totally fine playing this card in limited. Um because I just I, I like first strike and lifelink that sounds fun. yeah but like I think it's only okay and limited right it, for right. a three drop yeah. it gets outclassed like pretty quickly and then if it's guess, outclassed its I, abilities don't matter at all yeah I guess specifically this one too they'll probably just have two of the limited grid wardens in there. yeah exactly probably just getting colded like it's so, sweet yeah. with combat tricks because it has all these words but oh like, sure yeah plus two plus two if you don't have a ton of combat tricks then like it's it's essentially a Grey Ogre, because as soon as it gets outclassed, none of its abilities matter. That's very true, yeah. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't help with anything bigger than a 2-2, two -two, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I see but what you're if you there. do put an aura on it, <laughs> then maybe you can just go to town. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if there's like a... I mean, I think uh, Gendy mentioned this card before. Like, if there's an Elephant Guide type card, that yeah. would be super good. All right. Daring Archaeologist, 3-dub for a 3-3. Three, three. When it ETBs, you may return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Whenever you cast a historic spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Not even until I'm to turn. This thing is okay. going to be good and limited and unconstructible. 
I definitely agree with both of those statements. Cool. Dauntless Bodyguard, Savannah Lions. Mm -hmm. Dub for a 2-1. When an ETB is, choose another creature you control. Sec, Dauntless Bodyguard, the chosen creature gains indestructible until end of turn. This is in the vein of Benevolent Bodyguard and such. Right. Um, I like this twist on it where like it does more on its own, but it also like it historically those cards end up being used for degenerate things like in com in combo decks it control it you know it protects the fucking like gristle brand that you're reanimating right yes definitely i like that this thing can't really do that um but still has that feel to it and that ability you know that anti-wrath tech um but this is this is a more than okay one drop to put in your in your uh what's this card called banalish marshall deck oh yeah absolutely i mean this is this is definitely just another good card to go in there it is a knight for the night matters cards that we are uh i think about to start getting to so yep um yeah huh. i think this is good good stuff like if somebody asked what dub meant it means w for a white mana symbol but here's a card Unless... called dub Unless... <laughs> Unless they're talking about this thing. Two dub for dub. Enchant creature. Enchant creature is plus two plus two. Has first strike and is a knight in addition to its other types. Alright, so more stuff to put on the Champion of the Flame. Um, first strike is generally good with um, Death Touch and... I don't know. It's just an aura. Like, it's just... There's not a ton of removal in this set, but there's enough? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's there's definitely enough cheap tricks to... Uh, you're probably not gonna want to just run this thing out there all the time. Um, it, it also doesn't really seem like a super fast format, so... Yeah. You know, I, I don't think you're gonna want to be like, oh, I'll play my 2-2 and make it into a 4-4 and... And whatnot because you know there, there's there's shit like spiders that are three fives <laughs> yeah four fives and like there's a yeah, man of war yeah there's a man of war yeah yeah and, and like and so, into the royal oh god i forgot into the royal yeah into the royal. <laughs> and like you, you know yeah no i i don't i don't think i'm into this card at all i i think if you're playing that deck where you just have you know the, the two drop red guy or whatever and you just need some auras then okay but you're kind of all in, and you just have to understand that. <laughs> yep. The Dauntless Bodyguard is sweet in that deck. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'll say that. Yeah, I mean, if you, you can obviously set up some sweet situations. Yeah. Um, Evra, Halcyon Witness. Four dub dub for a four four life link. Four exchange your life total with Evra, Halcyon Witness's power. Okay. So this is Sarah Avatar reference? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Probably not constructible, but probably real sick and limited. Yeah, I mean, one-shotting is a thing. You know, or the threat of the one-shot, obviously. Just, uh... And yeah, if, like, I mean, they're, they're chumping good. to prevent the one-shot, then you're just, like, eating a creature and gaining four? Yeah, eat a creature, gain four life sounds real good to me. Card seems sweet. Yep. Excavation Elephant. Love me some elephants. Four dub for a 3-5. Kicker, one dub. Enters the battlefield. If it was kicked, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Sure. Limited filler. Uh, there's not, again, still not a ton of artifacts to get back. But if yeah, you ever do, just, it's sweet. Yeah, you could have one of these, like, equipments that, you know, we we had discussed. Uh, or maybe if, like, they blew up your IC or something like that, you can get it back. But, yep. Uh, yeah, pretty fringe kicker there. Fall of Thran. Five dub. One, destroy all lands. Okay. Two. And three, each player returns two land cards from their graveyard to the battlefield. Okay. So... Tempo-wise, it's interesting, because you play it, and then they have no lands on their turn. And then you get two back, and you get to make a third land drop and play a three, 
and they get two back and get to play three, and then you get go up to five, potentially six. Right. And then they continue to. So you're you're ahead time wise, um straight up. Right. But if you want to use this card, I feel like you're not using it straight up. Like you're using it with that thing that exiles their graveyard. And like you get your lands back and they don't. That would be yeah, definitely something along those lines for sure. Um like scavenging guess... grounds them. <laughs> like and that would be super adorable, yeah. <laughs> You just blow it all up, and then each player returns two lands, and you get your lands back and scavenging grounds them, and then <laughs> they the next turn they don't get stuff yeah. back, and you do. Yeah, sure. I don't, I don't know. Like, it's just so weird. Like, I mean, scavenging grounds does do both or whatever, but like, there was the we did read a card earlier that uh, you know only got their yard or whatever. So. Yeah, there's some cute stuff I guess you can do with this, but uh, I guess you could just try to put it in a deck where you just want to play it as Armageddon. Do you want an Armageddon in your White Weenie deck, maybe? This could fill Not for block, six. But... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, uh, I would for four. Fair. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, actual Armageddon, I would very much be interested in that <laughs> card in any constructed deck that, uh, you know, that's aggressive. Whatsoever. Something like a Flagstones would also be nice. Uh, man, that card was sweet. Especially because the legend rules. Were yeah, it's after. even better now. <laughs> yeah, it's actually better now than it was then. Gideon's Reproach. One dub, instant deal four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Totally good yeah. removal spell. Yeah, this is the more usual white common rule spell. In, uh, yep. Limited. And it's, it's, uh, it's nice and cheap. Healing Grace. Dub, instant prevent three damage that would be dealt to any target this turn by a source of your choice. Gain three life. Reference to Healing Cell that just does both. Does both. Um, sure. History of Banalia. Oh, uh, yeah, one of the Night Matters cards. One dub dub. One and two create a 2 2 white knight creature token with vigilance. Three knights you control get plus two plus one until end of turn. So, yeah, if you're doing the white weenie thing with the knights and the tokens, this thing's great. It's great. Yeah, I think I think this card is just great, great. I think so too. I mean it's it's a gray ogre to start, right? That's not yep. good. But then you get a full other token. Yep. Um and if this just read one dub dub put two knights into play, it would be playable. Um obviously just the first two abilities is slightly worse than that, but then you get this third ability that, like, you know, could be upwards to eight damage. Yeah, I mean, or, or even more if, if uh, you know, you've played other knights. Yeah, if you play it late. Yeah, I mean, you do have, like, the Dauntless Bodyguard that's a one-drop. Like, you've got the uh, the Glorious Anthem guy is a knight. Um, yeah. You know, so there's the... And, and there was the... Um, the old... Or the callback to Black Knight... There's a, you know, I don't think we've gotten the white one of that yet. Right, yeah, but that one... I assume uh, it's just the same. Yeah, it's the, yeah, the inverse, obviously, yeah. So, I mean, there's there's those cards that do exist, so the, this could definitely be a thing. Um, yeah, I mean, on its own, I think, yeah, it's just... Uh, I think on its own, it's just going to be a good card, for sure. I mean, like, I, I wouldn't even mind playing this in my you know, white weenie deck if my only other knight was the glorious anthem, you know? Yeah. There's a couple of knights. Yeah, I mean, it, it wouldn't surprise me. Paladin uh, of Atonement, Forerunner of the Legion. Okay. Uh, Famished Paladin, Oathsworn Vampire, Blood Crazed Paladin, if you want to go black. Meh. I don't know. It seems, it seems just really efficient and then on 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 its face and then it seems like the deck that it fits in definitely exists like this card right we, we talked a lot about cards that are like good but don't have a home i think this card is good and obviously has a home right yeah, 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 yeah. invoke the divine two dub instant destroy target artifact or enchantment gain four life sure 
Cyborg card yeah. in limited, probably not constructible because you can do better. Yeah, I think we've got better uh, options at the moment for sure. Knight of Grace, it is indeed just the inverse. It's a grizzly bear with hexproof from black, and as long as anybody controls a black permanent, it is a 3 2. Sweet. It being a knight is good. Hexproof from black is great because black, like all the removal spells that are any good are black. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, all the moment of craving, all the the other new one, the minus two, minus two with kicker, yeah. Nebraska's contempt. Um, you know, it's worth noting. It's it's stuff like uh, Chupacabra. Yep, Chupacabra, yeah. Chupacabra, push and contempt are like the three that I think are yep, like the sure. the most playable. And yeah. Oh, also, I really think the um, never to return is is really playable. Um, Which one is the never to return? Oh, the uh, sorcery speed heroes downfall, and then three yeah, 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 yeah. B exile a card from a graveyard, put a two two into play. A, you can get a two two. Yeah. I think that card's legit. Uh, yeah, I remember. No, I remember even playing it when it first came out, and then uh, it just kind of faded when uh, everyone started playing Brass's Contempt. Yep. Knight of New Benalia. It's a uh, blade of the sixth pride, but it's a human knight. There you go. Knight it up. Quinde Pride of Femoref. Three dub for a 2-2 two, two double strike. Creatures you control with first strike have double strike. Okay. So now we're looking at this knight. We're looking at that stupid three drop that I said is not good. What else is first strike? All these knights have vigilance. Um, not a lot of first strike, but... It doesn't look like much first striking so far. It's an interesting card. Yeah, I mean, I, I think on its own, it's just going to be, uh, you know, one of those awkward to play against in the early to mid game limited cards. Yep. Um, and then just going to have some some splash damage with, uh, you know, giving your Knight of Grace double strike, which sounds like a fucking beating. <laughs> yeah, it does. Like you play, you play, you know, whatever on one, and then the Knight on two. And then the Anthem Benelish thing, Marshall on three, and then this thing on four, and your knight is attacking if they have a black thing for eight by itself. That sounds fair. <laughs> Lyra Dawnbringer, three dub dub, five five. Angel. Flying. First strike, lifelink. Other angels you control get plus one plus one and have lifelink. Son of a bitch, this card's good. Sarah Angel. Dawnbringer, Baneslayer Angel reference? Lord. Sure. Yeah, I mean, throw it all in there, you know? And she also gets double strike from Quende. Quende. Hit you for 10, yeah, gain I mean, 10. Yeah, I mean, this card on its own, like, if it wasn't a Lord, this card is still fucking obnoxious. Like, yeah, I mean, it's for a strike, like 5-5 five, five for 5 is, yeah, I mean, everyone... I think by this point has at least heard the horror stories of Bane Slayer Angel. So, I mean, you know, for a card that also just says it's a lord for a very popular casual archetype of angels, this is another one of those, like, yeah, man, just don't don't get rid of these. Just keep these for all <laughs> Yeah. You know. The only real playable angels we have in standard are Angel of Invention and Angel of Sanctions. Yeah, I think... Probably what we should do at the moment is just ignore the second line of text. Just keep look at the keywords yep. and, and realize that it gets over, you know, Chandra, Glorybringer, Fable Push. Yeah. Uh, it gets Braska's Contempted, obviously, but everything does, so that's not really... Yeah, it gets Contempted and Chupacabra pretty and Chupacabra. hard. Yeah, Chupacabra is pretty hard on this one for sure. Having said all that, I mean, the fact that it gets around all these red cards and, like, Brick Walls of Phoenix and, like... You know what I mean? Like, it beats the crap out of a Phoenix. Yeah, exactly. Just just absolutely wins Gaming that. Gaming 5 outruns a Hazard pretty well. Yes. <clears throat> Definitely. Definitely. I'm into so it. I think, yeah, I think, I think this card's just good. I think yeah. it's just going to be very good. Yep. I wouldn't... I would not uh, bat an eye at this scene. Standard play out the gate. Mesa Unicorn. Grizzly Bear with lifelink. Sweet. Yep. We had one of these in the last set too, right? Or one of the rivals. Yeah. It's uh pretty pretty good as far as two drops go. Mm-hmm. 
On Sarah's Wings, three dub legendary aura. Enchanted creature is, is legendary, gets plus and plus one, and has flying, vigilance, and lifelink. Now this is an aura I could get behind. Yeah, this this is definitely an aura. This is not some like rinky dink here, some plus one bullshit. How does it not turn it into a an angel? An angel? That's literally what I was thinking. I was like, how is the creature type not angel? That's such a beating. All the other ones like change them change their type. That's fucked up. Too, they don't want it to be turned on by Lyra Dawnbringer. Sorry. Yeah, too powerful. Too good. Uh Pegasus Courser. <clears throat> Two dub for a one three flyer. Whenever it attacks, target creature, target attacking creature gains flying until end of turn. Uh, these cards generally are like two twos for four and are pretty good. And a one three for three with this ability seems better. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> I think the I, I I was talking to someone at some point about the uh, the Heliophant, I think from the last block. Yeah. Um, and I was like, look, man, if this card was an 04, I would play the shit out of it. Yeah. But it's a 2 2, so I get like one shot. Exactly. Yeah. Which is cool, because like most of the time it like lava axes them or something. But like, yeah, the fact that you, I think that you can just repeatedly attack with this card, because we haven't seen yep. many of the you know, it, three powered flyers. It gets down a full turn earlier, so like mm -hmm. your two drop doesn't get brick walled by their three drop. Right. You just go straight to the skies, and yep. then. The extra toughness means that their Windrake isn't trading with it. They have to go up to their five mana flyer to trade with it. Right. Or I guess there's a three two for four in white, but yeah. <clears throat> sure. Sanctum Spirit, three dub for a three two lifelink. Discard a historic card, it becomes indestructible until end of turn. Hmm. That seems like a fine limited card. Yeah. I think it's uh, I don't think it's ever gonna get near a constructed deck. Nope. So Unless yeah. you really need to discard your <laughs> historic cards, it, like, real that's, bad for some reason. That's fair, yeah. Uh, seal away. One dub, enchantment, flash, ATBs, exile, target tapped, creature, and opponent controls until seal away leaves the battlefield. Yeah. Hyper premium removal spell. Yeah, this was the the card I was referencing when we were talking about the Teferi a few days ago. Yeah. Right, last week, whatever it was. Yeah, I think uh, they obviously want those two cards to be played in the same deck, and uh, yeah, I think I, I think I might be the person to to satisfy their desire. <laughs> yeah, it seems uh, seems really good. It's um, it's cool that they they gave white this super cheap, super efficient removal spell, but it doesn't work in the white weenie deck. Right. Yeah, no, it, I, I really like the way that they designed it specifically for that reason. Yeah. Because you don't, you don't want to have, like, a white weenie deck that actually just has Path to Exile or whatever. Like they, right. They it's learned, they too learned good. that. It's way, way too good. But you do want, you know, these approach decks, for instance, to have... Yeah. Like, this, is, this is what that card, that deck was missing. It was missing a two-drop removal spell. And, and now you could have the option of playing cards like Divination... You know, so yep. I mean, I, I think the approach deck is going to be very real. Uh, you know, after after this after this comes out, it's just getting so much good stuff. And uh, Canada you know, this, Fett this... points out that it uh, gets Hazard pretty good. Yeah, it gets Hazard, gets Phoenix, gets Glory. I mean, obviously everything gets Glorybringer, but all these like it doesn't random really get Glorybringer. Hazards. Sure, I mean it kind of does, but like they're never going to. It gets Phoenix and Hazard real good though. Sure, yeah, but I mean like. It, it gets everything, but I do agree that it is real good that it gets, uh, you know, the, the Phoenix and uh, and all that. I guess it's also worth that it gets any god, so I guess if they're just, uh, you know, hit, put their Scarab God into play, and this is the first turn that they've had it, and they just turn that, that thing sideways, get them good. So. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really get Scarab God too good, but it's better than nothing. I suppose cards like this... Um, and, and, you know, cards like Ixalan's Binding and stuff are going to be worse now that we have the End of the Royal effective reprint. Yeah, uh, that is also so a good that, point. That is very... I mean, uh, re the red things that you're getting with this don't... Yeah, right, there's, don't there's not going to be an Into the Royal Hazard deck. Yes, yes. Sergeant in Arms, 2-dub for a 2-3. Human Soldier, not a knight. Not Kick, a knight. Kicker, another 2-dub. ETB, if it was kicked, create two one one soldier creature tokens. How the hell does this not say knight everywhere? 
Mm, they, they, don't, they don't want one one knights. It's too good. Yeah, yeah. The knights are two two bitch. Soldiers yeah, are one ones. No knights. words. Fair. Um. Yeah. Super good. Efficient card and limited. Not constructible. Yep. Agree. Sarah Angel. Oh, how far she's fallen. No shit, right? Still great and limited, probably, uh, but not yeah. not the powerhouse win condition it once was. Yeah, I mean, don't worry. Now we have Lyra Dawnbringer to completely outclass this card in every yeah. single possible way, while also conveniently making her bigger. That's good. Yeah, sure. I like when women lift each other up instead of tearing each other down. I'm completely on board with that statement for all the reasons. Sarah Disciple, one dub for a 1-1 flying first strike. If you cast a historic spell, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. This sure. thing, if you cast that uh, double strike thing, that's a historic spell. Okay. So you're hitting for four that turn. Just saying. Get it in. Probably not really doing much more with it. Yeah, I mean, you could, like, uh, I don't know, get the, yeah, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm giving up. Like, <laughs> the, yeah, there's, like, the Sarah's Wings or whatever, and that, that's really it. Yeah. Shalai, Voice of Plenty, 3-dub for a 3-4 angel, more angels. 3-4 flyer for 4. You, Planeswalkers you control, and other creatures you control have Hexproof. 4-G-G. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. I like it. Cool, cool, sweet card. Uh, yeah, great, great, great limited card. Obviously, just to uh, like three, four flying for four is very good. Yeah, giving all of your other stuff hexproof so that they're as if they were going to kill anything them. else other than this anyway. Sure, yeah, but I mean, it, it keeps them. It keeps you sane when they like draw their wizard lightning bolt or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Son of a bitch. Uh, you know, so I think I'm okay with that, and then it gives you something to do with your, uh, you know, extra mana. Just to if, yeah, if you happen to be green, which you yeah. probably shouldn't be because you're white. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> Tishar, Ancestor's Apostle, 3-dub, 2-2 two, two flyer, bird cleric, not an angel. Whenever you cast a historic spell, return to your creature card with converted mana cost 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay. This thing's sweet. Yeah, I mean, this definitely seems like a uh, super good ability uh, in, in a vacuum. Uh, again, this is just going to all come down to, you know, how many of these legends end up being relevant. And, yeah. And, and, you know, what? where is the line of, like, well, this card's not very good, like the the, the three-drop 2-2 two -two that we were talking about earlier. Is that good enough if you can, like it back later if you can cause it to use cards like Tashar to get other things back later like right you know it turns on your legendary sorceries and stuff like it's just gonna be a really good balance to figure out that line and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that agreed and me as well um the one card that really pops up to my mind for this thing is Mox Amber yeah of course um yeah you just like curve and they wrath and then you play this and Mox and a one drop and yeah, you have, like, sucks. three things already in play. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely agree that could be, uh, you know, a thing, especially if it's, like, uh, you know, this card mocks into the 1-1 one, one that, like, protects this card or something. 2-1 guy, yeah. Yeah, so I think that could be uh, a sweet thing if you can figure out how to get some sort of semi-loop action going on. Yep. Tragic Poet, 1-1 one, one for 1, tap, sacrifice, return, target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Cool, cute. This is this is actually just like when I thought about it for a second. This is wonderful flavor. Yeah, it is a, a very good top-down design, um, like, and I could see like like Soul Sisters having one of these to Ranger of Eos for you know something like that. That's very that's very reasonable actually. Uh, I always forget about old Antoine. Yep, everybody does. Triumph of <laughs> Gerard, one dub. Uh, Saga, 1 and 2, or put a plus and plus 1 counter on target creature you control with the greatest power. 3, as target creature you control with the greatest power, gains flying, first strike, and lifelink until end of turn. So this is kind of like a Johnny, a Johnny Pride Collar. 
Okay. But yeah. way worse? Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of how good... Yeah, it's from uh, really Legacy. Yes. Well, like, you play a one-drop, and then you play this thing, and nice. attack for three. Yep. And then the next turn, you attack for four. Mm-hmm. And then the next turn, you attack for four lifelink flying first strike. Yeah, I, I'm just kind of thinking, like, if the third ability is not that great of a payoff, which it may not be, because it may also just be one of those situations where, like, you could legitimately not have a creature in play. Or it could be, like, yeah. a 2 -two. You know? Like, they may like you have to draw runner. this... It's not good to, like, curve into it. I think we just... I just showed that off. Like, your best case scenario isn't good, and if they, like, kill your thing, or you don't have one drop, it's terrible. Um, yeah. And drawing it super late is also not good. A plus one plus awesome. counter is not going to yeah. be relevant in that combat, and the game will end, or your opponent will be able to deal with it, the third ability, by the time it goes off. So... Yeah, I mean, like, do you want to play this card on 5 with a 3-drop, or, like, on 6 with a 4-drop, and that doesn't sound very good either? Yeah, you have to draw it in, like, a middling turn, and have a board be a certain way, and then the payoff is medium. Right. And then all of the other all of the other game types are fail cases, and the floor is really, really low, and the ceiling is yep. also quite low. Agreed. Urza's Ruinous Blast... Four dub legendary sorcery. Exile all non land permanents that aren't legendary. Okay. That's a hell of a text line. Yeah, I, I, I'm totally on board with this one for sure. I think this is going to go really good into any of the Karn like, control decks. Yep. Um, just straight up, like, that seems like. It's so misleading because it says non-land permanence, but then it doesn't hit Planeswalkers. Right, right, right. So it's it's clearly trying to, you know, address things like the uh, the enchantments, the sagas, yeah, hit some of the, uh, yeah, some of the uh, the sagas, um, and then also even the older enchantments like Ixalan's Binding or the Oblivion yeah. Ring style cards, um, in mass or whatever. So yeah, but like you're gonna have those in your deck that would have this. I definitely agree. Um, so I think it definitely will kind of warp the way that you play some things. You have to choose between playing a bunch of legends in this or the enchantments. And I think the enchantments are going to win in just about every deck. Probably. You are probably right. Um, it, it is going to be, I don't think it's just an absolute because of, you know, the end of the Royal card or whatever. Um, it may not you know, I mean, there's obviously just going to be a an ebb and flow of enchantments into the royals and this type of card. Um, yeah, it is more of a mass removal effect. So, um, it is worth pointing out that it is exile, so it's not like a yeah, but it doesn't hit Hazard or Scare yeah. of God. Sure, that's true. Um, how how relevant is exile if it doesn't hit the things that are? Well, th those are definitely two of the what I would say like the two of the three. Um, you know, it does exile a phoenix or whatever. It does exile, um, you know, the the smaller value cards that people want to get back with their scarab gods or like champion of wit style cards. Yeah. Uh, so it's 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 Scranger. more relevant. Yeah, exactly. It's it's more relevant than it appears on the surface. Um, but I do agree with you that not being able to hit the uh, hazard and scarab god is a little awkward. But you know, it is what it is. Yep. Oh, and that's the last one. That is it. We're there. All right. Uh, any any final words? Uh, I'm probably going to want to just rip up Carnes. Um, <laughs> I mean, just straight up, man. That card. Like, every time I've read it and discussed it with a person, I mean, y yourself included, like, I didn't even think about the ability to... You know, just kind of leave a card out there inexplicably with a silver counter. Like, don't worry about that card. Not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way. Ten I'm turns down the line, I'll draw another card. And, uh, and, uh... I'd like that one back. Thank you. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, and, and, it's and sick, it's just, man. It, yeah, it's, it's just so sick. And then there's, there, you know, there's these cards. Um, uh, you know, like, this, this could conceivably even be in, like, this white weenie deck. Which is, it's 
yeah. fucking absurd to say. Yeah. The, you like you have a glorious anthem in your deck. You know, this like shit, man. Making two twos, three threes, and four fours sounds real good when you're like <laughs> yeah. alternating that with like you know, getting a sweet card or like, oh, maybe you just want to remove your silver counter and get another glorious anthem or like the saga that makes knights or whatever. And like, I, I mean, th this card is just going to be in every deck. There's going to be everywhere. And I think I'm on board with more of the cards that say destroy target planeswalker on them. Um, yep. As you were, as you were referencing the three drop, I think that card is going to be way more seen um, also because the second, the second half is very relevant now, yep. um, uh, you know, which I think people are going to slip on towards the beginning because they're just not, not going to be used to playing against that card anymore. Yeah. Um, now, I legit think never to return is like a legitimate player going forward. Absolutely. I mean, you're going to need something. You'll, you only get to play four, to you only get to play four contempts. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. You only get four contempts and like, I guess you can play the oblivion ring or whatever, but like. Yeah, kind of asking for it, um, and as we as we discussed in our you know conversation about Karn, it's just man, you're kind of already dead by the time you get to like untap and cast something to deal with it. Yep, and uh, you know, so I, 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 it's it's just got so much. Lo it's just got everything. It's it's got it all, man. I think, like I I, I am not one of the first people that would be like we should ban cards. I really want to see what this card does before I start yelling about shit like that because I think it'll be <laughs> super ignorant to do stuff like that. But like ban a card before it comes out. I mean, what they did that with like, uh, uh, you know, skull clamp or whatever. Just like, okay, we've seen we've seen people play with this card now. We fucked up, you know. Yeah. I, I I'm just really hoping it's not one of those situations where you're just like, how the fuck do I? Beat the this the card? scariest thing about Karn is that there's no Bloodbright Elf, right? Yes. Like, no, you got a Glargle. <laughs> he attacks for nine, man. Yeah. <laughs> Get him in. So I, yeah, I I think uh, I'm really excited to. Uh, yeah, jump into uh, deck building yeah, for yeah, some of this. I mean. There's, there's obviously going to be a lot of uh, mana improvements for several existing decks, which I think is very exciting always. Very and key. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's a thing that people don't think about. They're just like, oh, man, mana is so good. Until, I mean, people did start to think about it when they had the fetch land and dual land standard or whatever, which was fucking obnoxious that you yeah. could just play all of your, like, Blue, blue, black, black, red, red, white, white spells. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. It didn't matter. And you're like, all my lands tap for anything. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Um, but people just kind of miss that part when they go into you know, you know new standard formats. And I, I'm I'm more excited for that than anything. Uh, I think. Uh, yep. I agree. So, I think the mana is interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm uh, I'm excited to see if there's enough cards for some kind of. Uh, you know, reanimator style deck, maybe just something that grinds it out with, you know, graveyard interaction more yep. so than reanimation. Yeah, uh, there's that deck. There's like the counter spell based control decks. There yes. are the monocolor aggro decks. There are, there's the yep. the mono black cabal coffers thing. Um, yeah, you can try that. Yeah. And. Yeah, there's like some blue aggro, like some uh, blue tempo aggro, yeah, yeah and those style things. There's, um, de there's definitely a lot of leads, like to start. Yeah, I mean, even just slotting in some cards, like the saplings, yeah, chat. Yeah, like like you can just take the existing, like I was saying earlier, the existing approach deck, slide in like syncopate seal away instead of like some yeah. of the other bullshit cards that you're having to play because nothing else existed. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, th I think there's a lot of those cards. And, uh, you know, I'm interested in stuff like the Dawnbringer, the Giant Angel, um, you know, to see, does that fit into a control deck? Um, you know, you can put in cards like Divination. That's going to start competing for some spots. Like, Glimmer is a very, very good magic card, but three is a lot less mana than four, especially yeah. when you start getting into this situation where everyone is playing a very, very, very important four drop. Yeah, um, exactly. Like, you... You cut your glimmer for divination because you want your Karn on four. Right, you want your Karn on It's not that divination is better than... Spell. It's not that divination is better than glimmer. It's that right. yeah, any three is going to be 
prioritized over fours because the fours are just so absurd. Right, exactly. I mean, you you either want your Karn or you want to be able to answer their Karn, their Chandra, their yeah. Phoenix. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm glad that Syncopate's in here because, yes, I mean, all one. of that in my life. Yeah, you know, and, and the other one, obviously, I think that everyone is... Uh, I mean, we spend a lot of time on Lana Worlds, but, man, that that is a real card. Uh, there will be a Lana Worlds deck. Yeah. I don't know whether it's a uh, green aggro deck. could be like a red-green ramp deck. But it's there, man. It's there. Uh, that, I think, was the most obvious besides Karn when we uh, you know, started gazing at some of these cards. For sure. All right. But, Sounds good. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, jump on to, to Magic Online. I think the pre-release stuff starts this weekend. Fortunately, I'm in the beta. Um, I Must think... be nice. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Um, they they they've done some uh, interesting stuff on there. As a as a quick side note, they have the uh, I almost had like a, a heart attack. Literally, I I opened up my first sealed deck because I was like three or four days late to the beta and doing any of their uh -huh. test runs and stuff. So they were like, um, we have Dominaria sealed deck, and I was like, excellent. Pop one open, sort by rarity. The first rare that's staring me in the face is Ancestral Visions. And this was before we had done any of the uh, reviews. So I'm, I literally just screamed. I was like, oh, my fucking God. <laughs> like, what, how? No one messaged me. No one told. And, like, I looked over and there was, like, Mox Opal. And I was like, what the fuck? I'm just, like, I'm, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> and, and basically what they did is they just, like, took some cards from this set and then, like, mixed it into, like, the modern cube. Or whatever. So I was like, "That's okay. funny." Oh my God, <laughs> like, man. What is this set? Yeah, I was like, "Hold on, I need to go pre-order some boxes." I'll be back. <laughs> you know, just like I was ready to leave my computer and just walk away <sighs> and uh, just be like, "Hi, yes, I'd like a case because you have Mox Opals in your boxes." So that is uh, funny. Yeah. So, but uh, so any any attempt that I've had to try to play limited in this format has just been completely bogus there's just <laughs> yeah yeah so no no uh no information to share there unfortunately all right well we uh have plenty of time definitely we do uh we do have plenty of time i'm looking forward to when the set is actually on moto uh, yeah not on the beta so that we can you know stream some battles or whatever um for sure i think having a, a crew um uh, you know viewers to watch help whatever Yep. I think it'll just be a really interesting process for people to see. I'm also behind. playing a Star City um, in like two weeks, and I, I'm probably playing stan the Standard. Okay. Um, so I'll be prepping for that and have more information from that as well. Yeah, that's definitely excellent. I mean, we do have the fortunate thing that we will have several GPs, a PT, and, you know, several Star City events between now and then. So we'll have plenty of data, yep. um, you know, to use. It's, but uh, I think it's going to be really interesting, um, especially if we can start streaming more of uh, just generalized strategy while we're battling and whatnot. I think people are I've, – I've been questioned about that a ton of, like, you know – once you guys like form a team or a squad or whatever of, of you know playtesting, like what what do you actually do? What is right. the difference between what I'm doing versus what people are trying to prepare for or for a tournament who have done this before, who have won tournaments, who have done well, gone the distance, etc. Um, yeah, it'll be cool to have that all. Yeah, kind of documented or documented. Or have, yeah, like, yeah, have chunks of people that are that are available to to follow uh, follow along and and see that, and I, I think people will be. A little surprised, a little not so surprised. Uh, I think my my snap answer is usually like play more sideboarded games. Yeah. Um, that that is that is normally my first kind of mind blowing advice to someone, and they're like, why? You know, but people yeah. just don't understand it on on the face value. It's just, you know, you realize, like obviously, some someone like you obviously realizes this, but most people don't just stop and think for three seconds to realize that more than half of the games that you play in Magic the Gathering are sideboarded games. You yep. More than half. It is 100% guaranteed 
more than half of your games have been sideboard games. I mean, unless you're playing, you know, Commander or something. But, like, if you're playing in a competitive format where you're playing standard modern legacy vintage, you will play more sideboard games than not. And people just show up and they're like, well, I kind of want to just slide in a card here and a card there, and I don't really know how to sideboard. And Yeah, you know, it's so bad. They, like, overload. They're like, well, I want a bunch of removal spells against this zoo deck. And I'm like, well, yeah. They just yeah. have nothing to take out. Right, right. Or, or yeah, they have <laughs> or that problem, the, the base problem of, like, I have 13 cards in my sideboard and I only want to take out four. Yeah. Um, or they have, like, the, I just want to put in, like, 100 million one and two drop removal spells where their hand just gets clogged with those and they don't line up correctly versus the threats and things like that. So, yeah, um, I, I think stuff like that is just going to become very interesting to learn. Um, I'm also, I, I mean, every time I try to, like, you know, play with Gindy or whatever, it's just, I learn stuff. I mean, yeah, Gin, Gindy's on another fucking level, man. I mean. When he's awake. When he's awake. <laughs> when he is awake. All right. So, uh, Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll get this up to YouTube. Uh probably tomorrow and Work. for anybody that missed any other parts uh good night good night everybody, everybody good night good night